Hi, my name is Christian Wolf Nielsen. I'm going to talk about near optimal decremental single source shortest paths in dense weighted diagrams. This is joint work with Aaron Bernstein and Maximilian Probst Gutenberg. The problem is the following We're given an edge weighted directed graph G, and this graph is undergoing an online sequence of edge deletions. We also have a source, fixed source vertex R. The problem is to, to obtain an efficient data structure that can maintain shortest path distances from R to every vertex in the graph. At any point in this sequence of updates, the data structure should be able to answer a query for a distance from R in constant time. There are main, two main settings for this problem, the exact setting and the approximate setting. We are focusing on the uh, approximate setting in our paper. Here, the data structure should maintain approximate distance estimates from R so that these estimates are never an underestimate of the true distance and it cannot overestimate the true distance by more than a factor one plus epsilon. And you can think of epsilon here as a small positive constant, small as you'd, you'd like. So what is known about total update time in, in this setting, the approximate setting? Let M be the initial number of edges in the graph G and let W be the ratio between the maximum and minimum edge weight in the graph. Then Henseringer showed that for undirected graphs, you can get essentially linear total update time. But for die graphs, less is known. So there's this classical result by Even and Shulak, which works in the exact setting, but only for unweighted graphs, which has a total update time of O of Mn. Hensinger all improved this by a polynomial factor, but in the approximate setting. Um, I'm not covering all results in this area because there are too many. I'm just taking a uh, selected few results. So Gutenberg and I showed a further improvement of this result, which is faster for both dense and sparse graphs. The new result in this Fox paper is that we can get essentially quadratic time for dense graphs. So this will be near optimal for such graphs. We also get a further improvement for sparse graphs, but I will not talk about that here. Similar to many previous randomized data structures, our data structure needs this fairly standard assumption that the adversary is oblivious. So the user is oblivious, which means that the updates are not allowed to depend on answers to previous queries. So I will only focus on unweighted graphs in this talk to keep things simple. The rough idea of our data structure is to make the graph G DAG-like and then use a data structure which is fast for such graphs. So as a warm-up, let's just assume that the graph G is actually a DAG. Then I'm going to show how to get roughly quadratic total update time using a data structure of Gutenberg and I. So this is not a new result, but it will be a good warm up for general graphs. First, let me just highlight some key ideas of the Ibn Shulak data structure for maintaining a single source source path tree. And this structure is for the exact setting, but you can also extend it to the approximate setting, which is what we're going to do. So what happens here is when an edge UV is deleted and this edge was in the shortest path tree T, then to reconstruct the shortest path tree, um, the data structure repeatedly extracts a vertex W with the smallest estimate from R and such that W got disconnected from R when deleting this edge UV. Then the data structure scans ingoing edges X, W to W in an attempt to find a new parent X of W that allows W to keep its distance from R. So if you have this equality here, you, W can keep its distance estimate from R. Just an example here in the exact setting, if this edge here from, uh, from this vertex to W is deleted, then W scans its in neighbors to find that if it gets X as parent, it can keep its distance from R. But if this edge here is deleted as well, then W cannot keep its distance of two and therefore it will increase its distance estimate by one. Now, if you maintain the shortest path tree only up to distance delta, 
then you can show that the total update time over all edge deletions is O of M delta. Because every time a vertex increases its, in its distance by one, it only has to scan its in neighborhood once in total. Now we're not interested in the exact setting, so let's see a lazy version of this structure. Suppose that instead of W is only allowed to scan an ingoing edge, edge x comma w, when the distance estimate from R to W is divisible by an integer i. Then you can show that at all times you have this inequality here. So if you pick i equal to one, you get the exact setting because this is zero and this gives a well-known inequality for shortest paths. And if you do this lazy variant here, you get this additive error here. So for every shortest path containing this edge, x comma w, you get an additive error of at most i minus one. But we also gain something from this because now this edge x comma w is only scanned during the course of the algorithm a total of O of delta over i times. So let's see how we can use this for DAGs. Let tau be a topological ordering of the vertices of G. Now for each vertex W and for each J from zero to log N, define BJ of W to be the set of vertices X where there's an edge from X to W. So you can think of X as a potential parent to W and such that topological difference between W and X is roughly two to the J. Now notice because of this, uh, these inequalities here that the size of BJ of W it must be less than two to the j plus one. Just as an example here, I have a topological ordering. Um, here I have vertex x and vertex w, and x belongs to b1 of w because the topological order difference between x and w is three. So we had this definition here. Now consider our lazy ES structure that I described before. And suppose that it only scans an edge x comma w where x belongs to bj of w if the distance estimate from r to w is divisible by this number here. So this is our number integer i from before. Now what total update time do we get? Well, we sum over all vertices w and over all j and look at, um, if you look at the size of this set here, this counts every vertex x in this set and now we're looking at how many times is the edge from an x in this set to w scanned well it's scanned delta over this integer i from before this integer here and remember we had this upper bound two to the j plus one on on the size of this set and now you see things canceling out and we get a total update time of roughly quadratic, which is what we wanted. Now the question is what approximation factor do we get? So let's only focus on approximating distances in this range here. And consider a shortest path from R to some vertex T, let's call it pi R comma T, and, and with this weight in this range here. Okay, so each edge u comma v on this shortest path where u belongs to bj of v has a, gives at most an additive error of this number here. That's what we argued from before. This is the i minus one term we had earlier. But notice also that the topological order difference between v and u must be greater than or equal to two to the j because u belongs to bj of v. So you can think of if you distribute this additive error over every increase you get in topological order when you move forward from u to v. The average uh, additive error per increase in topological order number is this number here divided by this number. And how much can you increase the topological order when you move, uh, you sum over all edges of the shortest path? Well, it must be at most n because you can only go forward in the topological order and all these differences sum to n by, by a Taylor scoping sums argument. But now, if you multiply n by this number divided by this number, you get the total additive error of this, which you can calculate to be at most four epsilon times the shortest path distance from R to T. 
And this amounts to a multiplicative error of at most one plus O of epsilon, which is what we want. So that was how we dealt with DAGs. Let's see how we can extend to general graphs. And this is a, the new part, uh, the contribution of, the, of our paper. So again, let's focus on approximating distances in this range. The first attempt could be to contract every strongly connected component, every SSC, because that will give you a DAG, and then we can simply apply the DAG structure from before. But this obviously fails, because if, for instance, the whole graph is a big SSC, you will contract the whole graph down to a single vertex, and you will get too big of an underestimate in your shortest path distances. So let's do something more clever. Suppose we only contract SSCs x, where the diameter of x is less than this value here. Now, what is the, under the additive underestimate you get for each SSC x? Well, you can bound it by the diameter. That's the, the uh, error you get when you contract x. And if you sum this error over all SSCs x, you can see that when you sum this fraction x over n over all x, you get um, one. So the total additive error you get is must be epsilon delta. So the problem now is we don't actually get a DAC because we're only contracting certain SSCs. So what, how do we deal with non-contracted SSCs? And here I just want to talk about separators and what I call one-way separators. So suppose we have our SSC X and what I talk about here works for general graphs, but let's just look at it for an SSC X. Um, let's pick an arbitrary root vertex S and grow a BFS tree inside uh, X here. Now pick a certain BFS layer, let's call that ESEP. So here's, it would pick the third layer in this drawing here and let VSEP be all the vertices that are reachable from S when you remove these blue edges here. Then you cannot have an edge going from VSEP to the complement of VSEP. So this red edge cannot exist because this is a BFS tree. So that's what I mean by a one-way separator. You cannot have edges from the right side here to the left side. Let's see why this is useful. So let D be this number here. I'll come back to it later. But D will be the threshold for when we will say that the diameter of X is too large. So when the diameter of X is larger than D, we grow a BFS tree from a source vertex S in X, and we pick a suitable BFS layer, ESEP. Now, when you remove ESEP, this will make this SSCX fall apart into smaller um, SSCs. And I claim that there's a way to order, topologically order these SSCs so that the only back edges you can get must be among ESEP. Okay. So I will show you a way so that the, to order these SSCs so that all, all these blue edges are back edges, but no other edge can be back edge. So if you find this topological order of these SSCs over here, and you put them before the a topological ordering of these SSCs, then you get a, an ordering where the only back edges must be these blue edges here, because this is a one-way separator. We could not have an, a red edge from VSEP to VSEP. So if we can somehow pick ESEP in a nice way, maybe so that it's small or has some other nice property, then we get something that I would call an approximate topological order. So our goal is to ensure that if you look at a shortest path pi of weight in this range here, and you sum over all back edges on, on this shortest path, all back edges UV, and look at their topological order difference, then in expectation, they will sum to at most roughly N. If you remember from the data structure for DAGs, the only thing we relied on for, the only way we exploited uh, that it was a DAG was that this sum here for forward edges was order N, was at most N. So if you can show that this holds also for the back edges in expectation, then you can essentially get the same time bound as we got for, for DAGs. So 
you can now use mark if you can show this up here we can use markov's inequality to to conclude that with constant probability the weight of this path pi is approximated up to a factor one plus o of epsilon and now you can get a high probability bound by running a logarithmic number of structures in parallel okay so the way we pick ESEP, this is the key thing to to get this approximate topological ordering the way we pick ESEP is we pick it as a random BFS layer from an exponential distribution. Uh, I will not go into the details with why we do it, but we can show that if we pick our layer this way, then with high probability, every vertex V that is in VSEP will be close to S after you remove the separator. And this I uh, will not talk so much about, but this ensures that when you split an SSC, you will get new SSCs that have smaller diameter. So, so you will end up with SSCs that you can contract. But this is the one I want to focus on here in my talk. And the second property is that for every edge u comma v um, in the edge set of this SSC, the probability that this edge belongs to ESEP, so the probability that it is a back edge conditioned on the the event that u belongs to vsep that is at most this fraction here okay so think of this event here as a bad event the event that e becomes a bad uh, back edge so we want to bound this probability here and that's what this um, this lemma here is doing okay so let's look at why this gives a good topological order, approximate topological order. So consider a shortest path pi, again, weight in this range here. And let's just focus on back edges bj that are obtained when we split an SSC of size in this range here. So this is a subset of all back edges we generated. Let E be some edge on, on the shortest path. Now, if you, if this SSC x containing E is partitioned into smaller SSCs, and if the starting uh, vertex U of E belongs to this side here, so not to VSEP, then clearly this edge cannot be one of these blue edges. E cannot be one of these blue edges, and therefore cannot be a back edge. So the only case we need to worry about is if U belongs to VSEP, because then there's a, a risk that E becomes a, a back edge, one of these blue edges here. So let's look at that case where u belongs to vsep. Um, then we, we can use the previous conditional probability that this bad event happening is, uh, this bad event happens with probability at most p equal to this fraction from before. And if you plug in the value for d, then you get this bound in the probability. And this bound is actually good enough for what we need. So you can think of, you flip a coin and with probability p you get a bad event and but this probability p is small so this is fine the problem is if you flip this coin multiple times for for this edge e then it might be very likely that e is added to bj but actually we can ensure that this doesn't happen so with probability 1 minus p you have the good event that e does is not added to bj then after splitting this SSC X containing E, we can do it in such a way that E will now belong to an SSC of size at most half that of X. So of size less than N over two to the J plus one. But that means that it can never be added to BJ later on because we are only, BJ was by definition, those back edges that were obtained when splitting an SSC of vertex size in this range here. And now we get an SSC of size strictly less than this number here. So if you get the good event, then we will never flip this coin again to check whether B, e, e should belong, uh, be added to BJ. And now we can argue that the expected number of edges E that belong to BJ and belong to the shortest path is then simply the number of edges on the shortest path times this probability P here, which is this value here. But we also have that the topological order difference between u and v is at most order n over two to the j. And this is because 
uh, u and v belong to an SSC of size at most order n over 2 to the j. And when you split that SSC, the difference in topological order between u and v cannot be larger than the number of vertices in the SSC. So therefore, we get this bound as well. And now we can calculate this expectation on the sum over all back edges of the topological order difference. We sum over all j and over all u, v and bj of this difference. Now this inner sum here is bounded by the size of this set times an upper bound on this difference here. But we have an upper bound on this difference is here. So I can now rewrite that to the expectation of this sum over j of the size of this set times n over two to the j. And if you use linearity expectation, you move the expectation inside. What is the expected size of this set here? Well, that is exactly what we calculated up here. It's two to the j log n over epsilon. And if you plug that in and multiply, then you get that it's roughly order n. And this is exactly what we want. Now we can use our DAC-like data structure to get roughly quadratic total updates on. So there are many details I haven't talked about here, but one detail is how does our data structure detect when an SSC X has too large diameter? Well, detecting this amounts to detecting when a vertex of X is too far away from, from a root vertex S of X. But this is basically the problem we are trying to solve. Like for the full graph, we are maintaining approximate shortest path distance from a root vertex. And this, this here is the, the same problem for, for X essentially. So we maintain our data structure recursively for X. It's not as simple as that, but this is the high level idea. This is the most technical part of the paper. We will have to, to read the details to, to get these details. Um, but I think I will stop here and uh, thank you.